Hello everyone, Chris Parker here, and I have three images that I would like to get your opinion on because I edited them in Lightroom and a second time in a different app. So I have a Sparrow, a Black Eyed Junko, and a Northern Flicker Woodpecker, and I'd like to know which of the edits that you like better. Now, I did ask everyone in my YouTube community about the Sparrow, as well as my Facebook group, which one they liked better. So here's your chance to let me know which of these edits that you like better. So I have the original raw file here on the left side, and the DNG file is the second edit, and that's on the right side here. So let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Let's go in a little bit more, right around 200%. And we can see that the second edit here is much cleaner. So we don't have any digital noise in the beak or the eyes, and the eye ring is really sharp. And we definitely see a lot more detail in the feathers compared to the original raw edit in Lightroom. Now this was shot at ISO 5000. And if we take a look at the original image before the crop, we can see I did a heavy amount of cropping for this particular image, which kind of contributes to the softness of the image, especially in the Lightroom edit versus the other one. So let me know which one you like better, the DNG Sparrow or the NEF Sparrow. Now let's take a look at the Black Eyed Junko here. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out on this one here because that's a little bit too much. I need to go down to around 50% because this was upscaled 2X. So you're definitely going to see a lot more of the pixelization in the image regardless of how you edit it when you zoom in too much. So I typically like to zoom in at around 100% for my images. So this one I'm gonna do 150, and I believe this one is around 70, which is close enough. But you can definitely see that the DNG file is a lot cleaner. The colors in the background are a lot more vibrant, and there's no hint of digital noise anywhere in this image. So the eyes, the beak, the eye ring, all of that is digital noise free and sharper. And we definitely have more sharpness in the feather and more detail in the feathers as well. Now it might be a little bit over sharpened, but we can make adjustments to the sharpening with this app as well. And I do think it is slightly over sharpened. So I may need to tone that down a little bit, but either way, I still like the DNG versus the NEF. So let me know in the comments, which one you liked better the Black Eyed Junko, DNG, or NEF. Now the next one is a Northern Flicker Woodpecker, and we have the original NEF file here on the left, which was edited in Lightroom, and then I have a TIFF file for the second edit in the other app. Now I did have to use a TIFF file so that I could remove the branch, which I haven't done yet. We can see that it's removed here, but that's the only difference between these two other than the noticeable difference in the cleanness of the TIFF file. So it's very clean, no digital noise, it's sharper, and we can actually see some feather details in here that are not visible in the Lightroom edit. So this was shot at ISO 5000, so a lot of digital noise, but the other thing that's contributing to the softness of this image here is the crop that I had to do. So I used a 200 to 500 zoom lens, but it wasn't enough. So I need a lens that's like three times longer for this particular crop right here. I wanted to get in real tight on the woodpecker, but that's as close as I could get. So I had to do a heavy crop, which resulted in the softness, but I was able to fix that with the additional app that I used for this particular edit here. Now, before I show you the app that I used to get this sharp, clean image, let's take a look at how we would typically edit an image in Lightroom. So we're gonna go down to the detail panel here, and you can see I only have the default sharpening on right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to around 200% here so we can get a closer look at what's going on when we apply the edits here in Lightroom. So if I increase the sharpening, you're gonna see some digital artifacts are starting to come through. Now I can use the masking tool to kind of tone that down, but it's not really bringing back any detail. There's a lot of artifacts going on in the image here, and it's not really sharpening the image as we would like. 
Now, if we take a look at the noise reduction down here, I have it set to 50 for the luminance, which if we take that back down to zero, you can definitely see there's a lot of digital noise in there. And if I go up to 100, it's going to remove all the noise in the image, but it's also smoothing out the detail in the entire image. So we're losing detail in the bark of this branch here and definitely in our subject here. We don't see any separation of feathers. There's no definition, no detail in there. So I would never go to 100, but even at 50, we're still not getting the same amount of detail as that final edit that I showed you just a second ago. So this isn't how I would apply noise reduction and sharpening in Lightroom. If you are going to use Lightroom, I would recommend creating a mask for your subject and for your background separately and then applying your noise reduction from here. So I did go very heavy on the noise reduction for the background because I'm not worried about losing detail in the background. It's not that important. So for the woodpecker itself, I did 29 and that's because if I go any further, I will lose detail. But again, it still doesn't match the quality that we have in this TIFF file here. So how did I get this edit? Well, I had to use a third party plugin. So I'm gonna go up to file, down to plugin extras and process with Topaz Photo AI. Now I know a lot of photographers aren't big on buying plugins or third-party apps that work with Lightroom, but if you're serious about the quality of your images and you liked all the DNG files, then you have to consider using something other than Lightroom. Now you can download a free trial of Topaz Photo AI with the affiliate link that I've provided in the description below. Now I will get a commission if you decide to purchase it and that will help me support this channel. Now you can try it out on your own image for as long as you want and I do have a guide that will show you how to use it which you will find a link for in the description below as well. And what the Photo AI software does is it analyzes your image among tens of thousands of other images to determine how much noise and sharpness to apply to your image and instantly we can see that that digital noise has been removed and the image has been sharpened. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to 200% here. Now, a quick warning that this software is addicting. As soon as you get it and start trying it out on your own images, you're going to be playing around with this little before and after on all your images. At least I did, maybe I'm weird that way, but I was just so amazed by the quality of the image after the AI engineering was applied to my images. So I'm at 200%. Again, I wouldn't go that high to review an image, but just to show you the difference between before and after. So it's processing this information based on the raw file. And that's why we're not seeing the edits that I had applied in that original image that I showed you for comparison. I had done some basic edits, like I believe uh, I increased the shadows, the whites, the exposure a little bit. I did a tone curve. All of that though, I can add back once I return this image back into Lightroom by syncing up the edits from the other image. But I just wanna show you a couple other things that you can do to make your image better. We talked about the sharpening on the black eye Junko being too much. Well, if we come in here to raw remove noise, the detail slider here is going to bring back that detail and the higher it is, the sharper the image is going to be. So if you find that it's over sharpening or the strength of the noise is too much, you can come in here and select a different model or you can just go ahead and adjust the detail slider or strength slider according to what works for your particular image. Now we also have another option here to sharpen an image either on standard model, lens blur or motion blur. Now, originally the AI software did not recommend any sharpening. That's why that was turned off. And I wouldn't apply any sharpening because now the image is becoming over sharpened. Even if I drop this down to one for the clarity and the strength, I still think it's too much sharpening, but I will use it sometimes depending on the image. And we also have lens blur. If your focus point is on the wrong part of your subject, let's say, the wings or the breast of the woodpecker here instead of the eye, then you can use lens blur to fix that. Or if there's some motion blur, 
it will fix that motion blur as well. And it's pretty awesome if you ask me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. We also have an enhanced resolution, which is going to be perfect for low res files or when you upscale your image. So let's go ahead and crop this image really tight like we did with the original edits that I had shown you. And let's go in real tight like so. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And then we have some options here to upscale the file. So right now the width is 1667 for the width. And if I 2X that, it will double the width and the height, of course. And then you have an option to 4X or max, which is 6X if you wanna do that instead. But you can see even with 2X, the image isn't that soft. It might be just a tad, so I may wanna sharpen it if I wanna use this resolution. But either way, you can see that it's 100 times better than what we can get in Lightroom. All right, so once you get the Topaz Photo AI free trial installed, you may wanna learn how to use it, which you can do with my Topaz Photo AI for Beginners guide. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.